So you're looking at an ever-growing pile of grey plastic. Or maybe you just got that new board game and it's absolutely packed with minis. Either way, you need to cover a bunch of plastic with paint quickly. Today, we're going to look at one of the ways to do just that. This is Caffeinated Miniatures. I'm Jared. If you know me, you know that indie skirmish games hold a major place in my heart. So when Jeremy of Black Magic Craft, an awesome creator and fellow Canadian, announced Idols of Torment last year, I jumped all over it. And now that it's out in the wild, I'm ramping up to hopefully demo the game locally, rope some more people into playing it. All this to say that I've got a load of minis to print and paint in pretty short order. I've recently been doing a lot of colorful underpainting, which led me to think Zenithal, but make it colorful. Now, full disclosure, I used the airbrush for most of this. However, I also did one of them just with a brush, just to show that process. So don't, don't let the airbrush put you off. To match the dark, gothic horror vibe of Idols of Torment, I primed these lost with black. If you wanted a much brighter, more punchy vibrancy, then you could prime them with something bright like white or bone. Next, I sprayed the shadow color, in this case, dark blue. Focusing on the lower areas and downward facing surfaces, this gives us some nice, cool shadows to build from. To create some eerie lighting, I then sprayed jade, primarily top down, trying to hit those upward facing surfaces and ensuring that I covered the face pretty much entirely. Once that primary xenithal was set, I grabbed pale yellow to add some extra brightness to the face and upper section of the mini. Working on a bunch of minis like this in an assembly line matter was super fast. Including the time it took to quickly rinse the airbrush and add another color, I was into each mini for well under 10 minutes. You could certainly stop at this point and start playing, but I wanted to play with some more color. And the Speed Paint 2.0 set that the Army Painter kindly sent me was just sitting there. So going further, I reached for Murder Scene. I figured this dark reddish purple would add some nice depth. Initially, I diluted this with Speed Paint Medium, about one part paint to three parts medium, which was still far too strong. So I increased the medium to about six parts, which created a much better result. The key to this step is to use a massive brush and absolutely mop it onto the mini. Just keep it from pooling too much in any one area. After giving that plenty of time to dry, I felt like the highlights weren't quite enough. So I pulled out the dry brush and some bright pale green, focusing mostly on the face and using very light pressure to brighten up the brightest light. Not exactly good paint jobs. However, they're colorful, atmospheric, and each one was completed in mere minutes. One of these lost minis had a failure during printing. So after reprinting, it gave me a great excuse to try a non-airbrush method using the exact same paints. Once again, I started from a black prime. This time, applying the dark blue to the entire mini by brush. Allowing that to dry, I then grabbed the same Pro Acryl Jade and began dry brushing it on the mini, covering the majority of the surfaces, just leaving the deepest recesses and shadows blue. Now some quick notes on dry brushing. Contrary to what the name might suggest, you don't actually want your brush to be dry. You do want a tiny amount of moisture to actually be in the bristles. I like to grab a sponge and let a drop or two of water soak into the surface. Then I'll just dab my dry brush into it before grabbing some paint. I kind of find the happy amount of moisture to be when you can't actually see that moisture in the bristles. But when you brush it on the back of your hand, you can kind of feel that moisture. It kind of almost feels cool. Then I'll get some paint on the brush and start removing the excess. You might be tempted to brush off the excess paint on paper towel. Don't. This will also remove too much moisture, which will just build up a lot of texture that you don't necessarily want on your mini. Instead, I get a cheap vinyl plastic cutting board from the dollar store and prime it. Then I'll load the brush and wipe off as much paint as I want on this dry palette. Again, I'll test the brush on the back of my hand to see how much paint is on it. Of course, I'm not an expert. Play around and see what works for you. If you've got tips or tricks, fire them in the comments below. Anyways, back to the mini. Like with the airbrush, I then grabbed pale yellow and dry brushed the face and tops of surfaces in a much lighter manner. From this point on, I followed the same steps as with the previous method. 
slopping on some murder scene speed paint, thin down with speed paint medium, one part paint to six parts medium. Then a light dry brush of bright pale green. And done. I kept these bases very simple, with texture paste, covered in dark blue, then a quick dry brush of jade. Really simple, just helping add to the atmosphere of the Lost. There you go, a very quick and atmospheric paint method, and a great way to add some color to boring old plastic. And I don't know about you, but I'd rather play with these minis than bare plastic. The beautiful thing is we can take this technique, change up the colors, and create any number of different schemes. These Lost minis are from Idols of Torment, a truly excellent skirmish game from Black Magic Craft. Also, it's kind of the perfect game for spooky season. So expect some more content in the future. Both the PDF rulebook and the STL files are now available. Check them out at the link in the description. As always, if you made it this far, you are an absolute champion. If you liked the video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more mediocre hobby content. And thanks for watching. You are awesome. And I'll see you in the next one.